Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this cool graphics using a nested loop and a 2D array. I made a series on introduction to creative coding and in today's video, we're going to focus on the two concepts, nested loop and 2D arrays. How we're going to approach this is that first, we're going to draw a grid of circles based on the number of columns, the number of rows, and the number of size that we want. Then we're going to create a 2D array named size where we're going to collect the size data of each of the circles. And then we're going to color it so that it creates this pretty cool graphics. First, I'm going to create three variables. The first one is columns. The second one is rows. And then the third one is spacing. So spacing is going to be the spacing between each of the circles. I'm going to give an initial value of 50. Under the setup function, I'm going to calculate the number of columns and the number of rows based on the width, the height, and the spacing values. So columns is equals to width divided by spacing. Rows is height divided by spacing. And then I'm going to use a nested for loop to draw the number of circles based on the number of calls and the number of rows that we have calculated. The nested for loop will have first a counter variable call i. When i is less than calls, then we increment it up. For j equals to 0, j is less than rows, then we're going to increment it up. So we're going to use an ellipse function to draw the circles, right? So we do ellipse. The first two arguments are going to be the x and y coordinates of the center of the circle. So what we need is that we need i times spacing and j times spacing. And then the width and the height would be spacing and spacing. So right now, the size of the circles are going to be the same throughout. Let's try it. OK, so you can see that because the ellipse function takes in the x and y coordinate, of the center of the circle. Another piece that we need to add is that we need to add spacing divided by 2 plus for both first and the second argument because we want to shift everything half a circle to the right and half a circle down. And there you go. And so now we have a total of 8 by 8 circles. What we want to do next is that we don't want the circles to be of the same size. What we want is that we want to create a 2D array to store a size data. So I'm going to create an array called size. And to tell the computer that size is of the type array, I just have to put in a square bracket. But within JavaScript, I can't just do a double square bracket to tell the computer that this is a 2D array. What we can do is that first just give it a type of an array by using one square bracket. And then inside the setup function, we can use a nested for loop to create a 2D array. So inside the first for loop, we will create a counter variable called i. And when i is less than columns, then we increment it up. And what we want to do is that inside the size array, we want to create empty 1D array. How many do we want to create? We want to create up to the number of columns that we want to create, right? So we will use a for loop to create 1D empty array. And we can do that by just writing size of location of the index i equals to an empty array. So if we were to print size right now, we can see that now we have eight 1D arrays inside the 2D array. And inside the 1D array, there's nothing, right? So it's array of size 0. And now this is where we put in another for loop. Of j equals to 0, j is less than rows, right? So now what we're going to do is that inside each of the 1D array, we're going to put in information of the size rows. So there are going to be a total of eight information inside each of the 1D array. And that's going to correspond to each of the circles within each of the columns here. So what we need is that we need size of location i and j. And what should be the size? We can start by just doing maybe how about a random, a random size between, let's say, 
between 10 and 30. If we do this, then we need to give it a size here. So instead of spacing here, right, we want to do size of location i and j and size of location i and j. So now what we have is that we have a total of 64 circles of different sizes between 10 and 30, not including 30 pixels. But that's not all we want. We want the size to slowly increase. So the smaller the row number, the smaller the size of the circle. And how we can do that is that we can use an equation j divided it by rows. So let's see. And this is not what we want either, right? Because now we cannot see the circles. So we want to also multiply it by the size of the spacing, right? Okay. What is the missing piece here? You can see that the first row, row j equals to zero, there are no circles because right now the size equals to zero. So what we can do is that we can do j plus one here to make sure that the value of the size will never be equal to zero. We're getting there. Okay, so what we want to do next is we want to put in some colors. So in our graphics, the first thing that we can see is that there are no strokes to each of the circles. So let's add that, no stroke. What is the color that we want to put in? So the color that we want to put in is that the smaller the row number, the darker the color of the circle. So it will range from the color black to the color white, right? From zero to 255. So we're gonna do fill of J divided by rows, then times 255, right? So when J equals to zero, this whole thing is zero, so it's black. When j is row minus 1, then this will be almost 255, but not quite. So what we want is that we want j, um, we want rows minus 1 here. Okay, so now we have from black to white. So let's change the background color to black. Okay, and now all you need to do is that you can change the spacing size to be smaller. And there you go. So now we have this cool graphics. What you can do to play around with this more is that, so instead of using this equation for the size, what if you do it based on the columns? You can do this, or instead of making whatever circle that is at the top to be small, we can change it by doing this, rows minus j, and then, that, and then now everything is flipped. So now that you can see this cool trick of creating this pretty neat graphics using a 2D array to store the size information, what if you try and use different shapes, different sizes, different colors? Give it a try and see what you can come up with.